Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we're going to discuss a somewhat important discovery in particle physics. A discovery that, to some extent, is actually a huge win, or a huge victory, for the entire field of modern physics, and specifically for the standard model of physics. The physics that tries to explain what goes on inside various particles, and how basically everything around us forms. But by itself, if you just look at the paper, things get pretty confusing pretty quick. Because with a title like this, you really have to be a particle physicist to even understand what's happening here. And as I mentioned in some of the previous videos, I'm not a particle physicist, but I play one on TV. So let's try this together. We're gonna try to figure this out. But in order to understand what all of this means and why this is maybe somewhat important, Let's first take a look at some of these subatomic particles that many of you might be already familiar with. And let's really just start with this. This is the most basic version of what a proton might look like. This is what you usually find in most physics textbooks. And though by itself this is I guess kind of correct, it is ultra ultra simplified. And so here we have two up quarks, one down quark, and these little squiggly lines, these are actually gluons. We'll talk about this in a few seconds, because it's super important. But interestingly, just over a year ago, I've discussed a super important discovery and actually a really cool visualization by MIT that sort of helped us visualize everything here a little bit better. Here, things get much more complicated because a typical proton is very likely a lot more active, with quite a lot of different things going on on the inside at all times. And so, for example, we have these quarks changing in colors all the time. This is the so-called chromodynamics. And we have a lot of different gluons popping in and out of existence, holding everything together. Which basically reminds us how everything here is still super complicated and how little we know about this, even after decades of research. And so this was actually a super cool visualization, helping us see atoms and helping us see protons and neutrons in a very different light. But this is just showing us mostly quarks interacting with one another and basically in a typical proton. Something that's very common, but obviously not the only particle in existence. With all of this basically formed through a very specific combination of elementary particles. With proton and neutron basically being what we usually call a baryon. But technically these are not the only combinations possible in the universe. For example, you don't have to have three quarks you can technically just have one quark and one antiquark in order to form something a little bit more exotic known as a meson. And though covering mesons by itself would be a pretty long video, today we're actually going to focus on just one. The one discovered back in the 70s with a somewhat unusual name, J. Psi meson. Sort of named after the people and the teams that discovered this. And by itself this is just a combination of a charm quark and a charm antiquark with this somewhat strange particle, sometimes also referred to as a charmonium, or a scion. And since the 70s, when it was discovered, particle researchers have become really good at basically producing this in various particle accelerators. And though by itself it doesn't really have a lot of use, it's useful to test different predictions. And this is actually what it's all about. Modern particle physics has reached such a tremendous complexity that now most of the research is essentially done through extremely complex predictions that can then be tested by seeing what's produced inside particle accelerators by detecting various emissions. And in the last few decades there's been quite a lot of various predictions of various potential particles, many of which have been confirmed in the last decade. We've actually discussed a few of them with videos in the description, such as for example tetraquarks or even pentaquarks, basically particles containing not two and not three quarks, but more like 4, 5 or sometimes even 6. But for many many years, in a lot of these propositions and predictions, apart from your typical baryon and even apart from different mesons, something else was a major prediction that has never been discovered anywhere. And this prediction goes back to that unusual subatomic particle I showed you previously. We're basically talking about those squiggly lines or those elementary particles that pop in and pop out of existence holding quarks together the ones responsible for the famous strong force. We're talking about gluons. Gluons are really important in order to understand pretty much everything in the universe, but they're very difficult to study, although we do know they exist. 
Once again, their existence was confirmed back in the 70s, specifically back in 1979, when one of the earliest particle detectors, the Petra Collider in the DESI facility in Hamburg, Germany, was able to collide positrons and electrons to produce various intermediary particles, with many of them resulting in the production of gluons, confirming the source of the strong force in the entire universe, and of course providing a major confirmation for one of the predictions of particle physics. But here there was actually another prediction. Scientists also believe that these gluons sometimes can come together and form something entirely different from a baryon and from a meson. They refer to this as a glue ball. I guess a ball of gluons. And in terms of actual physics, this made a lot of sense. There were certain combinations where these glue balls were possible once gluons combined in a certain way. But for many years it was practically impossible to figure out what sort of a mass they're going to have and what properties they might have, because the calculations here got super complicated. Until early 2000s, when a lot of this became much simpler by using computers and a new theory known as lattice QCD. Way too complex for this video, but just know that it exists, and it makes a lot of very specific predictions about other particles, and of course about glue balls, sometimes also referred to as gluonium or gluon ball. And basically here there are no quarks, there's nothing else but gluons, connected to each other through strong force. These would be relatively massive particles, with masses actually kind of similar to certain isotopes of hydrogen and helium. They would also contain no charge, but would obviously not be very stable, unless the temperatures were super hot, kind of like a few moments after the Big Bang. Or possibly in some extreme conditions, such as maybe inside neutron stars. But now we basically had a lot of predictions about their properties. And you can actually see some of the predicted values right here. This is from previous studies from years ago, with the mass measured in mega electron volts. And so here we had at least three different possibilities. But in order to discover them, the researchers would have to look for very specific pions of very specific energy, because that's essentially what they decay into. But the question is, how do you produce them? Well, it turns out that if we go back to that J psi meson, it turns out to be a perfect candidate in order to discover these unusual glue balls because it has something like 64% chance to decay into a bunch of gluons that can then turn into a glue ball. And so basically this was always seen as the best possible way to discover these unusual subatomic particles. In other words, we have this unusual exotic particle that someone creates and then it decays into another exotic particle which then decays into something else. Moreover, back in 2008, Chinese particle physicists began a really cool project. It's known as BAS-3, Beijing Spectrometer Experiment, that became extremely good at producing these J psi mesons. And as a result, this became the primary source of potential discovery of other particles. And since then, as of 2023, it has already conducted approximately 10 billion miniature experiments, producing a lot of data. And inside of this data, the scientists behind this study discovered over 100,000 different events that resulted in the production of an unusual particle that they referred to as X2370, with 2370 basically referring to the total mass of this unusual particle. This is in, once again, mega electron volts. And, uh, hmm, have we seen this before? Yeah. It's a mass that's not really that far off, from the predictions from other studies. And though it might seem like it's not a perfect prediction, turns out that one of the most recent studies, theoretical studies, predicted that the mass should be approximately 2395. And the most recent recalculations actually found the value to be super close to that, with the overall significance value being approximately 11.7 sigma, suggesting that this is extremely unlikely to be completely by accident. And so this by itself is just a confirmation that these glue balls do exist, over 100,000 of these were produced in these experiments, and every single property predicted by previous studies seems to match the results. Important to note though, this is just two gluons and not three. But I guess the main question is, okay, but why is this actually important? Well, once again, as I mentioned in the beginning of the video, this is a major victory for modern physics, because here we have a confirmation of a prediction from decades ago. Something that researchers back then just could not calculate, as not only did they not have the right facilities for this, they also had no mathematical models in order to calculate the right properties. But now, after decades of research, we have the math and we have the evidence, naturally suggesting that maybe the modern model of particle physics is relatively correct in most of its predictions, though obviously not all. 
you can learn about some of these anomalies in one of the videos in the description. And so basically this is just another discovery of an exotic particle that the scientists believed could exist. And by proving its existence and by now knowing what to look for, they can push the envelope a little bit more, possibly leading us to even more discoveries, with some of them potentially one day answering big questions. The questions about the universe, how everything in the universe works, and when it comes to, for example, cosmology, maybe helping us figure out what exactly is gravity and how gravity works. Even though there is definitely a connection between gluons, strong force, and gravity, there is still no explanation for the actual connection. And so we'll definitely talk more about this in some of the future videos. Until then, check out all of the links, including this paper, in the description below. Thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership, or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.